Well, it has been a contentious couple of days, and the man in charge of leading the Senate Judiciary hearing is Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley. Senator, thanks very much for joining me this morning. Glad to be with you, Maria. So give us your characterization so far. We are now up to day three. What uh, would you say about the last two days and what to expect uh, on day three today? Day three will be about like day two, I believe. Uh, the, it's a chance for the American people, if they're watching television, uh, to uh, observe uh, uh, what they think of Kavanaugh. And I think they're finding somebody that's very well qualified. And nobody uh, yesterday could put a glove on him in regard to qualifications. And that's why for the last two months, all you've heard is things about uh, to detract attention from his good qualifications, mainly uh, the whole uh, issue about how many uh, more millions of pages should be available about him. And there's already 488,000 pages available. That's more than the last five Supreme Court justices combined. So I think that, uh, that he's going to do well this time and go on to confirmation. Wow, this is incredible. You said that there were 480,000 pages of information uh, given to the Congress uh, about Brett Kavanaugh. And yet, when you first started off the hearing on day one, Senator, you were interrupted by the left. Several senators said that they wanted to shut the whole thing down. How, did you, were you expecting that? Uh, it's the first time it's happened in 15 uh, Supreme Court nominations I've been involved in in the 38 years I've been in the Senate. Uh, this is the second one I've chaired, uh, and it's the first time that anything like that happened. But you know how it happened. Uh, uh, Senator Schumer, the leader of the Democrats, got them all on the phone and said uh, the progressive end of our party says we aren't doing enough to stall or stop this nomination, so you got to create some turmoil. and. They created turmoil for about an hour and 15 minutes, but after that, everything settled down. 21 members got a chance to give their speeches, and then we get into yesterday and today, and then now the American people get a chance to uh, vet uh, the new nominee. But this is incredibly amateurish. I mean, you know, you're, you're doing this hearing. By all accounts, this guy is incredibly uh, well prepared for the job at hand, given his resume, and yet they want to shut the hearing down. Can you characterize this? I mean, what is going on within the Congress, sir? Yeah. Well, uh, obviously, for the last uh, at least 16 years, uh, all Supreme Court nominations and even lower court nominations have become very political because uh, uh, filibusters have been applied uh, to those uh, positions, whereas for se between 1789 and the year 2002, uh, there weren't such filibusters because if there had been a filibuster, you know, Clarence Thomas would not be on the Supreme Court because he was only approved 52 to 48. Yeah. So it's a whole new environment, and we're living through it, and it just got uh, the, the epitome of it, uh, uh, or the height of it was um, Tuesday, when, what you saw there. Yeah, but I mean, it's funny because the day before the hearing actually began, you wrote an op-ed for USA Today, and in it, you predicted Democratic senators would try and distract everybody with heavy politics. Turns out you were right. That is exactly what happened on day one. How are you, how are you operating in this environment of constant resist? And do you think voters will react to this? Uh, I can't comment on what voters might do because I don't know. But uh, the way I run the committee is the same way that I ran it when Gorchish was up uh, before our committee a year ago. Uh, just let everybody talk, let everybody ask all the questions they want to, because if you don't do that, you spend more time arguing why they shouldn't do it. Right. So j it, it looks like uh, you don't have control, but you end up having more control than if you would argue with Well, it. I thought it was really ironic that there was so much hysteria over wanting more documents. Meanwhile, Senator, you have been leading an investigation into the FBI and the Department of Justice, and you've been asking for certain documents, asking uh, for, for certain interviews to be had with insiders at the FBI, and you've been told no from the leadership yeah. at the DOJ. Can you tell us where that investigation stands right now? Well, it stands pretty much at a standstill until we get the documents. And the most important thing is that we were promised by letter, by phone call, even face-to-face -face discussions we've had 
by Rosenstein that we would get exactly the same documents as the House Judiciary Committee or the Senate Intelligence Committee got, and we haven't been delivered on that promise. And I'd like to have that promise kept. After all, uh, you know, promises in this town are cheap, but they ought to, with something as high level as. Uh, as these promises yeah. are, you'd think they'd be kept. Can I ask you, sir, what specifically are you looking for in those documents? Why do you need to see the documents that you're asking for from the FBI and the no. DOJ? Well, remember, this all started out with Trump, uh, Russia, no collusions right. proven yet, but it was in regard to political interference uh, that maybe uh, uh, there, there had been in the FBI. Well, then facts lead you to uh, political interference possibly in the previous administration between the White House and within the FBI and within DOJ. And so uh, if there's political interference and the purpose of our hearing was to investigate this political interference, uh, you know, one leads to the other. But in order for me to issue a subpoena, I have to have the support of the Democrats. And I've got very little support from the Democrats on issuing subpoenas for anything except uh, Russia and Trump. But when it comes to Hillary Clinton and, uh, and uh, the Democrat administration, uh, why do you want to go there? Yeah. Uh, Hillary's, Hillary's been hurt enough is the message I got from them. Well, that, that's exactly right. I mean, there's all this hysteria over name calling in the White House. You got this explosive op-ed in the New York Times claiming that there's resistance within the Trump administration. I am part of the resistance inside the Trump administration, writes this, this, this opinion writer. Uh, and, and yet, it's all about name calling, but it's a completely ignored situation of actual wrongdoing. The fact that Hillary well, Clinton was never really investigated. Yeah. The fact that they did put their thumb on the scale when it came to this investigation of Trump. Well, what I see from a Trump administration, regardless of the anonymous New York editorial, uh, I see a president who's trying to carry out what he said he was going to do in office, uh, get uh, NATO uh, countries to pay more for their own defense, uh, take on, uh, put sanctions on Russia, which he's done because of Crimea yeah. and because of Ukraine, and uh, trying to level the playing field for our exporters by getting other countries to get their export uh, subsidies down. So who do you think wrote that letter? Do you think it's somebody within the White House or is this somebody who, uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the payroll of the New York Times? Uh, listen, I don't know. And uh, I don't normally uh, comment on anonymous uh, things like that. And there's, uh, I don't know how, whether they have credibility. And I think I should wait until I know more about it. Senator, we uh, are appreciating uh, you joining us this morning. You think Brett Kavanaugh gets uh, confirmed? Bottom line. Uh, probably the week of uh, 24th of, uh, uh, well, probably by the 27th or 28th of September. I think uh, there will be about 54 votes for him. But here's one thing about the number of votes. If we got at least 50 votes, we're going to get four or five Democrat votes. Mm. If we don't have 50 votes of Republicans, then he won't be on the Supreme Court because Schumer's not going to let any one of the Democrats vote for him to be the 50th vote. So, so you think, though, that he'll, you, you said September 24th or October 24th? Uh, September 24th. All right. So or th that week, I should say. That week. Senator, we'll be watching. Thanks so much. Thank you. Senator Chuck Rossley there.